Thank you for choosing to watch this sermon preached at Heritage Baptist Church. Heritage Baptist Church is located at 1843 Peaksville Road, Locust Grove, Georgia 30248. You can contact us at 770-320-7771. Visit us on the web at www.hbcga.com. Any scripture in the Bible is inexhaustible. You hear people preach on the same scripture for years. Somebody get up anointed like the preacher did this morning and give you something fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. What a, what a precious time together here the uh, last night and then this afternoon. Yeah. We'll be going in a little while. But uh, what a thrill to always be here and to be with the Hensons. Yeah. I believe some of God's choice people traveling the road. Yeah and singing and preaching the good news. Amen. And I count it an honor to be in their presence. And of course, in Brother Terrell Melissa and in this church. <coughs> it's getting about time to eat. Are we going to eat again today? Yes, sir. Where we go? Wherever you want. Uh, that's pretty good last night. That's good. Butler's. But, Butler's, yeah. Amen. Well, then, I'll just preach long enough to get a check, and we'll go ahead and <laughs> go eat. Amen. Hey. Yeah, yeah, we'll get Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey. I believe the Lord wants me to share with you out of John chapter 4, just for really and truly just 10 to 15 minutes, and I mean that, because I know you've been here last night and earlier and so forth and what a thrill it's been again <coughs> to be with you. I mentioned last night I'm not complaining but I'm having a little physical problem but I'm enjoying the Spirit of God. I love the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. I like to call him the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. You go talking about the Holy Ghost, you scare Baptists. Yeah. Yeah, you I've said before you you go down and get the grocery store, you don't have to wait on two or three buggies, just go talk to the lady on the register about the Holy Ghost yeah. being all that heritage. They'll change aisles if you don't believe that, try it. You ladies, you don't have to make an appointment at the beauty shop. Just go over there and go talking about the Holy Ghost. Some lady will kick that thing off her head and say, I got to go get my kid out of kindergarten. He's 15 years old. <laughs> Amen. I love the Holy Ghost. Amen. In fact, I'm miserable around, especially the house of God, if he's not very evident and prominent in, in the service. I uh, want to go a little different direction this morning. I don't know if I've ever used just the thought. The Lord laid on my heart yesterday and last night out of John chapter 4. We know this familiar story, very familiar, about the Lord uh, coming from Sychara to Samaria, or there, and uh, from Judea, rather, and uh, met with this woman that had had five husbands and was now uh, living with a man that wasn't her husband. And... Uh, he walked 30 miles to get to that well right. to sit down and wait on that woman. And uh, man, she's living with wasn't no count. She had to go out there and draw water. He is at home watching television. <laughs> and uh, but she, uh, in the providence of God, I don't understand all about these things. Uh, they can be a dozen people in this house this morning that's lost, and God can save every one of them, but sometime it'll seem like God will just get on one lost person like he did me that night, right. and yeah. you just suffer until you can uh, get born again. Yeah. I died the night I got saved. 
Yeah. I was so under conviction, and I was praying silently in my spirit, Lord, don't let this service come to a close without saving me. Amen. And they got to the last verse and was fixing to dismiss. And I've told this before, but here, I'd never been to that church. My brother was the pastor and I'd never been. I wasn't interested in church. My dad was a pastor. I'd heard all the preaching stuff I wanted to hear much. And I went down there and that last verse, I'd got in such condition. And there was a, one of the deacons. I didn't know him. He said, Preacher, let him sing one more verse, and God saved me on that verse. Amen. And I've already gone last year again to his grave at Pleasant Hill Church in Rockdale. And I said, Brother George, I know you don't hear me, and probably, but I want to thank you for that last verse you asked him to sing. Amen. 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 Sing one more verse. Preach one more time. Pray one more time. Yeah. Visit one more time. Yeah. Had a man in our church visited a home on a bus route two years every Saturday morning. Brother and sister's true love. Right, honey? And two years to the Sunday, they came to church and got saved. Yeah. Brother and sister South, yeah. I preached their funeral lately, and, uh, but they didn't give up. We, we give up too easy, don't we? Yes, sir. Didn't sound like Daniel give up. No. Hey. Amen. Is this going out on the air? It will. Oh, I was hoping it didn't because I wanted to preach what Brother Henson preached. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead. In the last few verses of chapter 4, we know the woman had been saved. And the amazing thing is, after she got saved in verse 28, she went back to the crowd she'd been running with, the men, yeah. and told them what God had done for her. Right. And uh, evidently they listened. And then Jesus began to talk, and the disciples were very concerned, like I've just kidded you about, about eating. You know, they mentioned in verse 33, they said, uh, hath any man brought him ought to eat? We, we need to be concerned about that. And of course, Jesus in 34 explained he had meat to eat they didn't know about. Right. But then he said in verse 35, Say you not there four months unto harvest. <clears throat> Behold, I send you lift up your eyes and look into the fields, for they are white already unto harvest. Amen. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is the true saying, one soweth and another reapeth. I say unto, I sent you to reap that upon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and you entered into their labors. That happened to me. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all things that I ever done. The amazing thing here is, she had already had such an influence to win people to God by her testimony after she got saved. It'll just show up on you if you get saved. Yeah. Yeah. And these men knew when she got back to they probably said, oh, come on in. We've been waiting on you to get back. She said, oh, no, no. I'm not coming in. You come go with me. Right. Yeah. I want you to meet a man like, I, I met a lot of men, but I never met one like this. Yeah. But I do want to notice verse 35, just five or ten minutes. Say you not, there are four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your fields. They're white already. And if I was going to preach this morning, I'd preach on text I've never preached on. I preached on we're, I'd preach on we're in an emergency. Right. We're in an emergency state in the United States of America. Yeah, right. You may not know that, but we are. The last account one before we left the motel this morning, we turned on to get on the news, and already in Orlando, Florida, 50 people are 
dead that was in that pub, that place. And 40-something are severely, many of them, wounded. And you know that's getting to be a common place in the United States. You hear here and there and just then somewhere else in a little bit came on and somebody had killed two people in another place. Now, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm saying we're in an emergency. Right. Right. Was coming down here, I, I feel a preaching spell coming on, but I'm going to try to handle it. But Janet and I was coming down here and for 10 to 15 miles, traffic had backed up because something had happened on Interstate 75 and they rerouted them back up the back road. I don't know what it was, but we went up through there. And in the middle of all of that traffic, all at once, we seen and some blue lights coming and a car right behind it. Evidently, a family is in trouble and the officers were leading and they were, I mean, I thought they were going to have a wreck because they were running so fast and the traffic was so heavy and they was moving in and out the side of the road. You know what's wrong with them? They was in an emergency. They turned the lights on and said, let us through. We're not just traveling up the road. We're in an emergency state. And I'll tell you something. When it comes to soul winning, we're in an emergency state. Yeah. Old preacher Herman Pettard said one night God laid a message on his, uh, made a, laid a man on his heart he worked with on the job. And God told him, said, when you get off from work, uh, tomorrow said, go by his house and witness to him. And he said, in fact, he said, go before you go to work. And he said, I got up the next morning out a little bit late. And he said, uh, I thought, well, I'll just wait till I come by this afternoon after I get off from work and witness to his friend. He said he went on by and he thought, well, I'll go home and clean up and maybe I'll just come by in the morning a little early. He said the next morning, Brother Peter said, the next morning when he pulled up in the man driveway, there's three or four cars there, and he got out and spoke to him, said, I'd like to speak to Brother Sotro, and said, Brother Peter said, he dropped dead about midnight last night. He missed him. Right, yes. Yeah. I wonder if that man had been saved, would have been saved. Right. Evidently he could have been, or God wouldn't have laid on his heart to go see him. Right. right. I told this, Janet and I are just starting out a young preacher, and Mr. Golden Mitchum uh, was the king bootlegger in the Cab County, and he had several families across counties that they delivered loads of whiskey to, uh, bootleg whiskey, and uh, they'd sell it. And he was a big man. He had five forty Fords running in North Carolina over bootleg alcohol. And uh, he drove big Cadillacs. And he had on all kind of, he was a good looking big man. I looked at them two fellas come up here a while ago, that woman, Dr. Henson, that we're going to pray for. Right. Where are they at? Raise your hand. If a fight starts, me and you two boys are on the same side. <laughs> I need to stop mentioning that. Amen. I started one morning, I was traveling with the Beach Nut Company, and I tried, and Mr. Mitchum was standing out. You may have heard this, but his brother Henson said it don't matter. I might have told it. But I started to Athens, Georgia, and started up through Stone Mountain, and when I got almost to the mountain, the city, the old city, Mr. Mitchum was standing out there, good-looking man, and down yonder uh, there running some dozers close to the mountain. Now there's a park on the other side. And as I started by, he, had, he owned the Gold Star Restaurant, the biggest, best restaurant in the Cab County at that time, and Janet and I could eat there free. He said, don't ever give them a ticket. They loved us. My wife worked with his daughter. I preached her funeral a few year, a couple of years ago. So we, he loved us, and he'd tell us that. They, they, his wife would take an ironing board, and she'd where they'd gamble, 
and she'd unfold money and lay it on an iron board and iron it out and stack money in shoe boxes. Now I saw that. I liked that. I didn't like what they was done, but I liked all them boxes full of money. <laughs> but as I was going by, heading to Athens to open a new store, the Holy Ghost said, stop and witness to him. And it like scared me to death. Right. Here I am, little old preacher, been preaching a little few months, and I think I'd already started pastoring my first church and just had an this big man with all this wealth. And God so told me to do that. And it scared me, and I went on by him. And uh, got so tore up in Stone Mountain, I made a circle and went back down to his house and got out, and he was standing there. And I said, Mr. Mitchum, I just won't stop and see you. What's going on down there? He said, Preston, we're building, all the dozers running, we're building a park, and we're going to have all kind of, we're going to have a club, we're going to have this and that and the other. And said, you and Janet, you're just almost like our kids. Said, y'all go down there and enjoy. Said, it won't ever cost you anything down there. He said, Preston, he said, I'm getting ready for us to really live. And God said, ask him, is he ready to die? And I said, God, I can't ask you that. He'd laugh at me. I stood there and trembled. And I didn't, I didn't do it. I got in the car and went to Athens. Worked all day miserable. Come in late that afternoon, and when I come into the old city of Stone Mountain, it was lit up with sirens. People were going here. And there, and here come the, the ambulance back there. They didn't run the EMT. They run the ambulance, the undertaker did. And I got inside of it, and there's a house of fire. And I got out of the car, pulled up the side, and his daughter run off of the porch. She'd, he had built her a new brick home. It's still there by his house in Storm Island. And she ran out and screamed, and she said, Preston, Daddy thought that old lady that's crippled was in that house. And my daddy went in that house. And he's in that house. And it's burning down on him. And after a while, they kept putting water on it. And they brought him out. And they laid him down there by the side of the, the pavement, the sidewalk, while I was trying to get him ready to get on the ground. And his eyelids had burned off, and his ears had burned off, and flesh would drop off. And they loaded him in a car and carried him in the Emory, and me and his son got in my car, and we stayed right on that bumper till they got him in the emergency room, and I stood there and watched him at the door while they was working on him. And 23 hours later, he died. I wonder where he is. I wonder what he would have said if I'd said, Mr. Mitchum, I know I'm just a young preacher, but I want to ask you, have you ever been saved? Do you know, let me tell you something. If I'd have known then, he'd have slapped me down. If I'd have known then what I know now, I'd have asked him if I'd have known he was going to slap me down. Amen. Amen. I'd have made an effort. We're in an emergency. People are going to hell. I wonder how many people went to hell since this service started. Right. Somebody riding down, got up this morning to eat breakfast with their family, started down the interstate, maybe go to church or maybe to go to some kind of lake or wherever. I'm not trying to create And now they're in eternity. Right. I'm trying to get on. I'm just giving you a few experiences. I was preaching at Pond Fork. And about halfway through my sermon, a man stood up back there and at Pond Fork where Brother John and I had still the pastor. And he raised up and stopped me from preaching. Had a baby in his hands. It was a year old the Sunday before, they said. 
And he said, Preacher, stop. He said, My little boy has stopped breathing. And Ms. one of our organists got up. Everybody went to praying quietly. I heard the siren coming. The EMTs were on the way, or the people, whoever it was. David is getting involved in some of that, and I'm so proud of him. And Ms. Johnson Willow went to play in the organ softly. And big EMT run in, laid that baby in the aisle upon Fort Church, and for 45 minutes they worked on that baby. And after a while, that big man picked that little boy up and said, This child is dead. And I preached his funeral, me and the pastor. They didn't know. When they addressed the little fellow to come to church that morning, I'm not trying to be sad, I'm trying to be real. Right. What'll happen before tonight? Now I'm an up, you know that, I'm an optimistic person. But the United States is in an emergency. Now I want the pastor to know. He won't offend me if he stops me from saying what I'm fixing to say. The United States don't need a woman as a president. Somebody said, how do you feel about women? I think they are more precious than men. I think if we're men, we're going to protect our, our women folks. We're going to do that. My daddy, I remember... My dad, he don't always till he died. my mother died young, he just about worshipped her. And I could get away with a lot of things, but I couldn't say nothing to my mama very much at all. And I'm going to tell you something. Saddest word I'd ever hear is when I'd do something, say something to mama, and she'd say, your daddy be home from work after a while. <laughs> I felt like Tony Hudson. Somebody said, how'd that feel? I felt like next to the electric chair. <laughs> my dad never did read Dr. Spock's book, and he didn't know what he was doing to my personality out there at the woodshed. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't exactly my personality he was working on. <laughs> Amen. I remember one time we was heading out there and Usually somebody else caused all the trouble. I just happened to be in the middle. I remember one time my dad was walking out there. I had my arm, I had my little old boy. I had the hickory. That's the awfulest looking thing I ever seen. And he said, son, it's going to hurt me worse than it does you. I thought, well, how come we're going to have this one-sided fight if it's going to hurt you worse than it does me? But before he died, I put my arm around him, said, thank you, Daddy. Thank you for correcting me when I needed it. Right. He might have been sort of like my brother Talbert's in-laws, Mr. Guy Burton. He had a big farm. My, bro my brother Talbert lives in the home place there now that he inherited. His wife did, and uh, she said he lives there. Mr. Burton had nine kids in that big farm. He told my daddy, he was talking about whipping. He said, Mr. Moore said, if I'm crossing my farm and I meet one of my boys, he said, if I got time, I'd just stop and whip him. <laughs> he said, I don't have to tell him what is for. He knows what is for. <laughs> We're in an emergency. Right. You can't even pray in school. I didn't think I'd ever live at that time. And I'm not going to stand up here and name thing after thing after thing. Already mentioned uh, the bathrooms. I thought, how foolish. How fo Doth not even... I'm going to preach sometime on the scripture. Doth not even nature itself teach you? There's some things nature teaches you. Nature te I'm, I'm getting done, honey. Just a few minutes. Nature teaches you that a man ought to look like a man. That's just nature. And it teaches you that a woman 
ought to look like a woman. I don't want some man hugging my neck in the altar if he's got on earrings and silk underwear. I, I'm, I'm, I'd just rather he just shake my hand and go on by. Amen. We're in an emergency. Woman ought to look like a woman. Amen. Amen. There's nothing more beautiful than a beautiful woman. My wife was voted the prettiest girl in Loganville High School in her senior year. And that's the one I married because I didn't want no ugly woman. <laughs> Amen. She had a sort of a boyfriend. There wasn't nothing much to him. I remember the first time I was living in Boar Road down on bus. I had a new, he had a new Pontiac, his parents did. He had a regular girlfriend. And uh, y'all go home if you want to. I'm not hardly done. <laughs> We're riding down then, riding down the street in Longwell on the high school gym. Uh, this beautiful little black headed girl standing there. And we was riding down. It was, I was going to get a date for Friday night. And uh, he already had a girlfriend. So we rode by and I said, hey. I said, who's that girl talking to that boy standing there on the gym steps? Oh, he said, I don't think you'd get a date with her. Said she likes that boy. He likes her. He really liked her. He looked dumb to me, but. <laughs> so I just walked out in the middle of the street. And I said, I said, what's her name? Said Janet. I didn't know she'd heard about me. And uh, I said, Janet, come here a minute. The old boy looked at me. And I looked back at him. She comes sidling out there and I talked to her. I said, Janet. I started talking to her as careful as I could. I said, uh, Henry's going to take one end of the ball game Friday night and I'd like to have a date with you and take you. We then go, we might even go to the varsity in Atlanta or something. Boy, that'd be like going to Florida now. She said, I can't date. She said, I won't be 16 till Sunday. And my mother won't even let me double date till I'm 16. And then they're going to have to know who it is. I said, don't you have a friend in high school you could go home with Thursday night and spend the night with her? Look, you got to figure things out. And she did, Brother Henson. <laughs> On the way home after the date that night, Henry said, how'd you like Janet? I said, I'm going to marry her. I really knew that. It took me years to convince her. <laughs> but I, I, I knew that. I wish I'd have known, though, what she said. Because her girlfriend, she said, well, how'd you like Preston? She said, well, I forgot Joe. <laughs> Whoa, boy, I'm, I, 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 that's doing business right. Listen, folks, I'm preaching. <laughs> Amen. Now, that had nothing to do with this message, I guess. <laughs> but it's good to laugh every once in a while. Amen. Amen. But we're in serious times, and let's do all we can. And uh, Brother Henson said this, and we're guilty. We always get up and talk about all the problems, but we don't do nothing about it. Right. We just talk about it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We need to be in prayer constant. If prayer done some things we've talked about here today, God still answers prayer. Yeah. There's been times in my life I'm as sure God answered my prayer as the Red Sea crossing with the Hebrew children. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you're not going to really pray till you got something to pray about. Right. You're right. I mean, after a while, it'll get serious if something bad enough right. goes on. Well, Brother Ed Blue said his wife was, thought that she was going to die. And he said, I was down by the river on my knees crying out. And he said, all I could say was, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Yeah. He said, I couldn't think of something to say, but just, oh, God. He said, 
But the Holy Spirit was saying to the Father, he's talking about his wife. Right. He's talking about his wife. Yeah. We'll leave him in a few minutes. You're good to us, and I love you for that. Be faithful to this church. Yeah. You ought to be so faithful to your church until, uh, if you're not here, they'll miss you. Right. 45 years I pastored Peachtree Road Baptist Church, and Miss Joanne Brett missed two services in 45 years. That's Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday night, revivals, conferences, whatever it was. Miss Linda Johnson was here last night. She played the organ, and she'd help raise the young people. And she missed two services right. in 45 years. Right. Second time she missed, her mother was in the hospital, and she'd come in the next service. I said, this is twice you've missed. I said, now if you're going to be faithful, I'm going to place somebody on that organ. We're not going to have somebody every few years that show, don't show up. I'm serious. Amen. You ought to be there. Everybody loves me. Raise your hand. Somebody raise your hand. Raise your hand. You know you love me. Amen. I love you. God help me. Somebody said, Preacher, you've had all these heart attacks, and you're 83 years old, and you run around all over the country preaching. Why don't you just stay home? You've got enough money to stay home just because we're in an emergency. Right. Right. Up, God laid that on my heart when that man screaming that siren coming right up here toward below, uh, the other side of Locust Grove, right. pushing people out of the way. We're in an emergency. Thank you for choosing to watch this sermon preached at Heritage Baptist Church. Heritage Baptist Church is located at 1843 Peaksville Road, Locust Grove, Georgia 30248. You can contact us at 770-320-7771. Visit us on the web at www.hbcga.com.